So we're back in a financial maths part of the syllabus, and we have so far done three subtopics in financial maths, and I wonder if you remember what they are. FM1 right at the start of this year. Mm. The very first thing you gotta do if you wanna talk about money is you need to get the money, right? Which we call that, we call that earning. earning. And once you've got it, you want to be able to like write a quick budget on it. Call that managing. Okay. Earning and managing is where we began, and then we said, okay, once you've got your money, once it's in your possession, you want to be able to put it to good use, right? So we said, well, maybe you want to buy some shares, or maybe you want to invest that in a company of some kind, right? So that's what FM two is about. Now. FM3, blink and you'll miss it, was a very, very small thing, but very important. And that was taxation, which we did very recently. These were all of the prelim parts of financial maths. Now, we're in an HSC part of financial maths. FM4 is called credit and borrowing. Now... The reason why I've drawn your attention to FM 1, 2, and 3 is not just because it's always good to have like a context of where you've come from and where you're going, uh, but also this idea of credit and borrowing is very closely linked to one of the ideas that you've already looked at. Credit and borrowing. Credit and borrowing is closest in spirit, in idea, to investing. Okay? In fact, as I'm going to try and demonstrate to you, maybe you want to draw this table for me, Credit and borrowing is just investing looked at from the opposite side of things, okay? So let's think about these two transactions together, right? The two transactions that I want us to compare are investing and borrowing, okay? So we'll just keep it as simple as we can. Investing, borrowing. Now, in both investing and borrowing, there is a temporary change of hands in terms of like funds of some kind. Right? So there's a transfer of funds. If you were investing in, say, some shares, right? You bought some shares off the um, stock exchange. Where is the money being, where are the funds being transferred from and to? Who has the money and who's giving it to someone else? When you're investing? Oh, when you're okay. investing? It's, 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 now I'm thinking about just the funds, right? Just the funds. So really it's from the investor, which for our intents and purposes, is like you. Right? And that money changes hands and you put it in the bank account of the company, right? So you give this money over and in return, they give you something called a share, right? So okay, you, got, you own a little bit of this company. Okay, so you become a shareholder by paying this little amount of money, or maybe a big amount of money depending on the company. Now, again, there's a transfer of funds when you borrow money, I'll give you the easy bit. Remember I said, this is the same idea but looked at it from the opposite direction. So you are now on the receiving end of money when you're borrowing money, okay? Generally speaking, where would you borrow money from? The from the bank, generally speaking. Of course, there are other people you could get a, um, you could borrow from. Um, you could borrow from a loan shark if you're in trouble. You could borrow from your parents. All of this, same concept, just slightly different. Yeah. Okay. Now, why? Why? What's the purpose? What is the intentional rationale behind why we would move funds back and forth between people? Well, let's think about this. Imagine you're the company. You're the company, and you're like, I want to, you know, float our company, actually sell out, sell out shares to people. Why do you do this? What's the point? Because you need revenue and money. Hmm. I want now. I'm, I'm not going to use the word revenue. We tend to use the um, word revenue for like, like actually, this is money that we've got. But here, it's temporary. It's like, no, no, no this is not really your money um, as a company. It still belongs to them. It's just that they're loaning it to you. If I'm a person starting up a company and I'm like, I've got all these dreams for places I can develop, products that I can create, okay? But I don't have the funds, like I don't have immediate access to it. So that's why I get other people to invest in me, right? So maybe I want to like hire staff 
which costs money, okay? But I don't have that money right now, but if investors can give me some, then I can use that to pay their wages, right? And from there, I can grow the company. Uh, I can hire staff, I can develop products, which again, I hope will make my company grow and get bigger. These are just examples of what I can do with investors' money. Basically, the point of Shark Tank? Uh, yeah, basically, right? I mean, the whole premise of Shark Tank is stand up and, and lobby and say, look, these people with huge amounts of money, will you lend me some of it? Because if, I, if you give it to me, I can use it, right? The money's not doing any good for you just sitting in a big pile, but I can do something with this. Right, now that's why we might invest in a company to enable them to do this. Why might we borrow money from the bank? What's the purpose? What kind of purpose? Buy a house. Okay, maybe you want to buy, maybe you want to buy a car. Okay, um, if you buy a house, we tend to give that a special name, starts with an M. Mortgage. Uh, mortgage, right? But it's, a, it's the same principle, just with a slightly different name. Say it again. Okay, yeah, all kinds of um, little costs that come along the way because we did back focus study on driving. We know there's lots of costs that come with that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that in um, 18 months, 15 months, a whole lot of you are going to borrow a big sum of money because you're going to enter a new stage of your life, whether it's university or take or whatever. You're going to have to pay tuition fees of some kind, which can be quite expensive. My sister's a dentist, and um, a dentistry degree, really, really pricey. Education degree, not so much. So <laughs> even then, right, um, we give a special name if you go to university to like not a house, which is a mortgage. We call the tuition fees, the loan that you take out and borrow, we call that HEX, right? Um, higher education contribution scheme, because actually what's built into that is how you pay money back. Um, yeah, I won't start that, that <laughs> debate right now. Okay, now. In some countries, how is it like uni? Like, I know in Germany, it's like free. Yeah, uh, in Australia, it was free for a period of time. But really? it's not that easy. Really? Our parents, some of our parents' generation. Okay, now, there's one last piece of this puzzle, right, which allows to compare these two things. There's a transfer of funds between groups of people so that the group of people who's getting the money can do something with that money, right? So it's like, cool, you, you get this huge benefit. Or the company, they get this huge benefit, okay? Well, if there's anything we learn from economics, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So in order to pay for this, right? This whole transfer, whether it's investing or borrowing, kind of comes with this IOU, like, hey, you're doing me a favor, right? Now, when you're investing, you buy the shares from the company, they do all this cool stuff and hopefully their company grows and they pay money, the company pays money back to you, right? What do we call that in an investing context? From their profits, starts with a D, they give you dividends, right? Yes, good, I hope this is ringing some bells, okay? This is just a special name given to it, but it's simply just like, it doesn't matter what name you give to it, it's just a representation of the fact that, hey, you did the company a favor, in good faith, that they would do good things with your money, and now they're rewarding your good faith. Have a look down the end here, right? If the bank did you a favor, then what's gonna happen over here? Well, you've gotta pay back the bank. And we call that not dividends, but interest. Okay? Now it's important you get different label, but it is the same reality. It's just looked at from a different person's point of view. So therefore, all the ideas that you learned back in FM2, all this kind of stuff, is going to apply again in FM4. Okay? We're just going to look at some slightly different applications of it.